Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Zach Celedonia. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name's Joe Kuzma, and this fine-looking gentleman here next to my side, my co-host and colleague, returning. Yeah, don't go looking anywhere else. <laughs> Zach Flash Celedonia. Who else are you looking for, my friend? How's it going? Where you been? Well, you, pay, you paid me a compliment, so I was making sure no one else was in the room real quick with me. <laughs> I'm feeling great, dude. I'm, I'm ready to roll. I'm excited. So close, Joe. So close, but no cigar to 4-0. and 3-1. Three and one. We'll take it, though, given how hard the Steelers' schedule is this year. We almost made it to 4-1 and one, or 4-0, and 3-1, oh, and, one, and we're hoping to get eventually to 4-1. and one. Maybe that was a sign that we get to 4-1. and one. Maybe so. We're going to jump right into things. We got a lot to cover today. Free game here. Dallas Cowboys on deck. Sunday night football. NBC and Peacock. So I don't have to throw up the whole map or anything like that. But before we get to it, a little bit like you were just saying, disappointment maybe last week. Just some quick thoughts on what you saw out there. And I'll try not to be a broken record just about this Colts game over again. Yeah, quick thoughts. I won't uh, try to drag on too long here because I know you and Brian already went, went over this on Monday. But ultimately, I'm I'm really disappointed and bummed out that the trap game conspiracy about Mike Tomlin just gains more and more credibility the longer we go here with him. I hate when people ask me about trap games, and I hate when people think that a game is going to be a trap game because I think it's hard to win in the NFL and you shouldn't look past any opponent. However, you can't look at the stats, and you can't look at the consistency in which Tomlin and the Steelers play down to their opponents without thinking this is a real problem. I, I was arguing with people all week that I thought it was too early for a trap game. I thought the Colts were, you know, not the best team, but they're not a terrible team, so I thought we wouldn't come out looking as slow as we did. That first half, dude, I mean, thank God for Chris Boswell, the AFC special teams player of the month. Thank mm -hmm. God for him because after the first half, I'll tell you what, I was ready to turn the game off. I, I was really upset. I was really bummed out. I'm glad my girlfriend wasn't home because I was screaming at the top of my lungs because I just could not for the life of me understand how the defense came out so sluggish and the offense came out so conservatively. And when you get to the second half and Justin Fields has probably the biggest mistake of his Steelers career, taking the sack fumble when he spun around and ran back 20 yards. I turned the game off. Full transparency, I turned the game off. I couldn't take it. And I put on red zone and was watching red zone for a second, sitting there pouting. And I, I, I thought to myself, you know what, dude? Don't be like the people you can't stand. Like, watch the game, turn it back on. <laughs> I turned the game back on and we had the ball on offense again. So I missed the whole three and out. I turned it on and thought my TV was lagging because Justin Fields was taking the snap again. And what Justin Fields and the offense were able to do, I know we came up short. I know we lost. But we had a chance in the end there to win the game despite how terrible the first half went. It, it was one of the worst games I'd seen the Steelers play in the first half in a long time. No passion on defense, no urgency, no pass rush. The offense was conservative. The offense was making mistakes. George Pickens fumble. It, you name it. Everything went, went wrong in the first half. But they were able to kind of buckle their bootstraps and get things together for the second half, in large part because of Justin Fields. I. It's kind of funny because this is the first game we lost all season but I feel like Justin Fields made his stamp on being the Steelers starting quarterback in that game. And there are still going to be some people who don't necessarily agree with that. I know you and Brian do actually, which I'm so proud of my boys. I, I felt like a proud, <laughs> I felt like a proud millennial son watching the last show, watching his two dads um, understand how to work a computer. You know, like I, I, I was beaming with wow, pride. I, I was maybe. so Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know we wouldn't venture off too much, but you do realize that me and Brian both have actual computer related, you know, digital media type jobs in the it's real world. It's a metaphor, Joe. I, I understand. Yes, I know. I know you guys he, are the typical. He's a computer programmer and I'm a web developer. I mean, like you couldn't get any further from the, you know, the, 
the stereotype and i'm not that old but yeah my mom she won't set the clock on the old vcr the microwave anything like that she was never touched no no the the hair is deceiving i understand or lack thereof i get it trust me you're not as old as you look and i was oh, very proud and excited to see that i'm working with two people that have the same viewpoint as me that justin fields is playing really really good football that's my main takeaway of the game it really sucks that we lost don't get me wrong and i hate that the the truth game trappers were right for this one. Um, we had a chance in the end and it didn't end up working out. That's the most disappointing thing of it all. Uh, however, I, I feel like people that want to put it on Justin Fields, they have it all wrong, dude. Justin Fields is oh, the yeah. whole reason why we had a chance to win the game. And if you think after that game that the Steelers should still go to Russell Wilson, let me read off some stats real quick. I, I got a real, real quick stat reading here for the people. So Justin Fields through the first four weeks, okay, he's got a 70.6 completion rating. That's fifth in the NFL, top five. He's got 97, 975 total yards. That's 10th in the NFL. Six total touchdowns. That's ninth in the NFL. Two total turnovers. That's fourth lowest in the NFL. A 98.0 passer rating. That's ninth in the nfl stop me when i get to something that isn't top 10 okay 7.6 yards per attempt ninth in the nfl he's one of only eight quarterbacks right now to be three and one or better he's tied for most third down most third down conversions at eighth tied for eighth at most third down conversions 0.9 percent of his passes have been intercepted that's 11th best in the nfl so there you go not top 10 not top 10 and he's taken 10 sacks. That's nine most in the NFL. And I got a message, too, for the people here. When Justin Fields takes a sack, when any quarterback takes a sack, that isn't always on the quarterback. I know that, like, people are scarred, and we all have PTSD from Kenny Pickett spinning and spinning and spinning and taking sacks and Big Ben holding on to the ball too long. But not every time a quarterback takes a sack is it on the quarterback. Some of these sacks have come when he has no time to survey the field or go through his reads. Justin Fields also has a 78.1 passer grading on this year. That is the highest of his career. And in conclusion, uh, this is through the first uh, four games, okay? This is for the Steelers' total offense, which currently is led by Justin Fields. We are, thir we are averaging 31 yards, I'm sorry, on, on a drive per basis in 2024, okay? In 2024, we are averaging 31 yards per drive, which is 50, which is 15th in the NFL, just, just in the top average. Not that great. However, we're averaging 6.4 plays. That is fifth in the NFL. And we're averaging three minutes and 10 seconds per drive, which is fifth in the NFL, okay? That is all 2024 led under Justin Fields. In 2023, we averaged 26 yards per drive, which was 27th in the NFL, a jump up of, a jump up of about 12 spots, 5.4 yards per play, which was 28th in the NFL. That's a jump up of 23 spots this year and two minutes and 35 seconds per drive in the NFL last year on offense, which was 23rd, a jump up of 18 spots. So whereas it may not be reflecting completely on the scoreboard, this offense is way better this year under the tutelage of Arthur Smith and under the leadership of Justin Fields. I hate that they lost. I would have loved to see us go to 4-0, but I hate to be that guy, but it could have been a lot worse. That, that That's loser talk for me, but there was a point where I thought, especially after Fields did the sack fumble spin around sack, that we were going to get laughed out of the building. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that Colts fans weren't scared they were going to blow that game in the end. Oh, we're the guy next to me was going crazy because I was in the building. He was going absolutely like out of his mind. He goes, here we go again. You know, yeah, they, like they let us stick around. They let us back into it. And Justin Fields accounted for three touchdowns, three consecutive touchdown drives. The last time the Steelers did that was 2021 with Big Ben against the Vikings. That was the last time we saw the Steelers offense account for three straight touchdown drives two runs and a passing touchdown from justin fields would have been one run and two passing touchdowns but george pickens dropped a touchdown yeah. right through his hands and i love george pickens and he put up 100 plus yards this game great game 
from a statistical standpoint. But he had a big fumble and a big drop. Thankfully, Justin Fields ran the touchdown in. That Pickens dropped. George Pickens, maybe another wide receiver threat. And now everybody is up in their fields because Devontae Adams, 32 years of age, wants out of Las Vegas. He's 31. No longer wants to be... Okay, whatever. He's an he's an <laughs> a, you want to talk about aging guys, okay? <laughs> like um always teasing me and Brian, but Devontae Adams, 31 is like the cutoff when it comes to wide receivers. I think the biggest problem is I don't have a problem with grabbing Devontae Adams. I don't want to use a second rounder because I feel he's a one year rental, less than a year rental. So I think he still owed something like sixteen million dollars. I'm gonna pull it up again real quick because each of the next two seasons he's under contract that the Raiders' current contract is is north of 30 in each season. It's not just a cap hit, but it's the actual um, the actual salary. Um, part part of the trade deal, uh, per reported from Adam Schefter and uh, Mike Garofolo, is the trading team is expected to rework his deal, too. And he's not supposed to make this astronomical amount of money the next two years. They're going to rework the deal. And I, you want to talk about aging products. What about TJ Watt and Cam Hayward and Minka Fitzpatrick? That is my whole thing. With Defense trading is for so Adams. different than wide receiver though. We've done it countless it times. Over. Yeah. It unless you're Jerry Rice, there's very few exceptions. The guys just seem like they hit 31. They peak. They had their last peak and just fall off a cliff there. There's so many of them we brought up over See, the years. I think the windows open for the Steelers though. I, I think this is a situation where our roster is constructed as such, where our quarterbacks are cheap, which is very, very rare. If fields keeps on this upward trajectory, which I hope he does, we're going to have to pay him at the end of the season. But right now, we have the money and the means to make the move. I would not be upset about trading a second-round pick and a future mid-round pick for Devontae Adams right now because it would help us possibly get to the AFC Championship game at minimum. This year in the AFC, the Chiefs aren't as good as they used to be. The Bengals suck. The Ravens we can handle. The Bills, this is going to be a Steelers-Bills championship game if everything keeps oh. going the way it is. This is the year to make the move. We have the money. We have the draft capital. And second-round picks, you're not going to convince anybody who thinks a second-round pick is too much or too little. You're gonna, no, you're not going to convince me it's too exactly. much. Exactly. No, 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 this no, no. Is, second round pick is too much. Too much. Here's why. To you. To you. To you yes. it is. But like they, they, they've they busted on as many picks that they've hit with second-round picks. So Le'Veon Bell, Juju Smith-Schuster, ooh, Chase Claypool. I don't know about that. Who, I don't know about that. Debate. Then you got Mike Adams, and then you got Sanquez Golson. Like the, Man, the second dude, round. Are you forgetting but, about guys like Stefan Tuitt, Zach Frazier? Pat I didn't want to list everybody. I didn't want to list everybody. You didn't want to list everybody. This is uh, George Pickens. The I second round bust. is gold for the Pittsburgh more Steelers. I could list more Ricardo Coakley. I could list more busts. You know, nobody knows who Ricardo Coakley is. Get out of here. I know here who with he that. is. I know who he is. So I think that. Whether or not you think it's worth it or not, you're not going to be swayed. My my argument is that I don't think draft picks are guaranteed. I won't give up a first for him. I won't give up a first. But if it's a second and a future mid-round pick, I would do it because I think this roster is constructed right now where there's the money, there's the means, there's the opportunity, the window is open. After this season, we're going to have to put money into quarterback, no matter who it is, or draft a guy if Fields leaves. I hope to God he doesn't leave, but we're going to have to pay quarterback. Pickens' contract is coming up. Like, they're... There's money we have to spend on the horizon. This year yes. we have money and we have capital. So I'm not really pounding the table too hard. I know I just yelled at you repeatedly, but I feel like more than anything, <laughs> let's let's say we don't get Devontae Adams, okay? And all all good vibes. We're gonna get him. But let's say we don't get him. If we don't get Devontae Adams, the aggression the Steelers have displayed, both trying to get Brandon Ayuk and now Devontae Adams, because because it's reported from Diana Rossini and confirmed NFL reporters, we are one of the teams trying to get him aggressively. And he is we are one of the teams he wants to play for. If we don't get Devontae Adams, I would not put it past us to try to get a guy who's also available. Maybe not of that status, but there's names out there who are on some crappy teams like Devon, oh, I'm sorry, Devontae Adams. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is one. Cost way less draft capital, I'm sure, because he's viewed as not as good as Devontae right now. Devontae, you take a consensus. He's viewed as a top 10 receiver still. Christian Kirk can play ball. He's good. The Jaguars are terrible. I used to think a guy like Michael Pittman or Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf was available, but their teams are rolling now, and they're they're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. having success. So if they don't get Devontae Adams, which I think they might, they could end up with Christian Kirk or DeAndre Hopkins. 
And I, I'm very happy for Calvin Austin and what he's done, but I think the Steelers are the ones showing they want somebody else in that room. And they aren't confident in Roman Wilson yet. He's been healthy for three weeks now. If Roman Wilson was playing, I, I might not be as vocal as I am right now, dude. Like, I, I might feel a lot better. I like the pick of Roman Wilson. He's wearing number 10. My favorite Steeler wide receiver number. What weather, man. I got Santonio San Holmes right here. Look at that. Boom. Joy of six. That's, <laughs> that's autographed right there. That newspaper clipping by Santonio. San I love number 10. I love the Roman Wilson pick when it happened. But the fact they're not activating him after being healthy for three weeks is very concerning to me. I don't get it. We need the help, clearly. The people that thought, oh, Van Jefferson's having a good camp. He's accounted for like two catches, and he can't block. Calvin Austin has been the unsung no, hero of the receiving group. Jefferson, but, Jefferson's time's up. Uh, Austin yep, yep. Uh, may have a coming out party here. There's a few things uh, missed, but hold on. I had something to show you here. AB, CTESPN here, thinks Devontae is coming. And yeah, I'm, I'm I not used to trust it. him, but he got he got uh, the he got the no, brand that I I Uke, I Uke was given the ultimatum and he chose to stay just like we said he was leveraging the team for now. Second round pick. I told you all the reasons why already all those players usually the Steelers hit more on second round picks and even first round picks. And that bodes well for the depth of your team when the first and the second hit. Right. They but do. but here here's my thing. Um, third round. Maybe it might be that rich. I, this dude's contract. Like, okay, it might get redone. Maybe it doesn't get redone. If it doesn't, he's just getting straight up cut. At 30, he's going to be uh, 32 going on 33. There's no guaranteed salary in the next two years. He's going to get cut even by the Raiders if they don't let him go. Yeah, They still have bonuses that are there, but you're looking at a base salary of $35.6 million and 366 There ain't no way in hell Omar Khan's doing that. Now, his base salary this year was 16.8. Take a quarter of that off. I think he's around 12 million right now because you get a game check for each week, right? Each yep. game that you play. So he's coming. That I'm on board. I'm on board with that. I'm not I'm not on board with it. I just think that, you know, a second round pick when you get a guy like let's say this year, like a Zach Frazier, that's Mostly playing well. We have some miscommunication, some rookie issues, and stuff with him. Oh, but, he's playing great. He's he's playing yeah. great. He, he's I don't want to give it. I, dude. I don't want to give it up for a like 12, 12 game rental, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah, but if that put us over the hill to get in the Super Bowl, would you want to do it? Mm, I don't know. You got to look at the yes, future you too. You got to yes, look at would. the future too. Hey. Yes, you would. To, to win a Super Bowl this year, dude, if he puts us over the hump and makes us better. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. You said something that was pretty interesting in that, too. You had said you had mentioned other teams. I, if it meant the Steelers taking him meant that the Ravens, Chiefs, Bills do not. And I think at least two or if not all three of those teams salary wise. I don't care. You can call the cap the myth all you want. I don't know how they're squeezing them in this year. I'd have to see who has some money still there. Maybe the Browns will put them there. They haven't even scored 20 points this year, and they have the most expensive The Chiefs, the Chiefs won't get them because so. they're in their division. Yeah. It, it, no matter true. how much yeah, of very true. Adams is making, they're not going to get him. Like You have to have you have to really think the player sucks to get an inner division trade, like how the, the Browns gave the Steelers Justin Gilbert and the Ravens gave us Chris Warmly. Like you have to really think the guy is a lost cause to trade <laughs> oh, him in man. the division. So the Chiefs are out, in my opinion, on Devontae Adams. It's going to be down to us, the Jets, and the Bills. Now, the Ravens don't need him. The Ravens, they don't have that kind of offense. They have the Derrick Henry thing going for them. They got Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. There's only one ball. The Ravens, I think, he listed the Ravens as the team he play for because they're good. I don't really necessarily know how much in they are on him. So I think it's yeah. going to come down to the Jets, us, and the Bills. He wants for... the Jets, supposedly. I don't know what money they got left. They haven't been paying Reddick, yeah. so that's one thing. But we got we to gotta move on. We got a lot of topics still to cover here. I know that You got the me Adams going, thing, dude. It's your fault. Your not, fault. It's not going to happen this week anyways, I don't think. I think it that could. it's still... It could, but I don't know. <laughs> you never never know. Some things move, uh, move like the speed of light in the NFL as opposed to some other things. So... Um, a little bit of ancient history. This is like three teams or two teams that have played in three different Super Bowls. Let me talk about team history between the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's their first time playing on uh, Sunday night football. And we are now in, what do you want to say? Like uh, the era of parody in the National Football League. This has been the tightest games have been. There have been more games decided by eight points, 39 of them. Seven points, 38, six points, 32 at this point in the season than any other in league history. Um, 
you got a couple of undefeated teams and whatnot, but you got Dallas Cowboys sitting at two and two playing the Steelers at Acrisher Stadium, 820, uh, Sunday night, NBC, Peacock. Go check it out there. And you've got the Steelers and Cowboys for the first time on Sunday night football. You're going to have all this old legacy stuff that's going to show up. Probably Neil, what's his name that we don't mention here, throwing three interceptions to Larry Brown in Super Bowl 30. One of my earliest memories. In fact, you know, talk about, we were talking about Weatherman off the air. Like, we're trying to figure out where do you point so people can see you pointing. This terrible towel is my original one. This is the one I cried in during Super Bowl 30 when that bum threw all those picks and made that dude like, it gave him a trip to Disney World for free. So you're going to see a lot of... I got a cry game too, dude. I got a cry <laughs> game. One, one cry game. It was the Fitzgerald yeah. Toussaint fumble game. So we oh, all been there. That yeah. was my cry game. I I was... I They had to put me on suicide watch for the Fitzgerald Toussaint fumble game, dude, because that was our game. And it hurts even more that people don't care. But that was the year that the Panthers were in the Super Bowl with the Broncos. And I felt like we could have handled the Panthers. So yeah. that was our year, dude. That was 2015. 2015, 2015, 15, I think, with like Eric Decker and Manny yeah. Sanders and Damaris Thomas, that whole like 50 some yard Peyton Manning touchdown year. Or no, 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 no. Uh, that yeah, that was the year. You're right. That was the year. Uh, then the following year was it Xavier Grimble fumbled in the end. So there was like you know the Broncos have been a thorn yeah, yeah. in the side. That, but anyways. The, the year I'm talking about is when Burfick knocked out Antonio Brown. Yeah, that he was wasn't gross. available for the Broncos game. Martavis Bryant had like 10 catches. My boy, he he went off that game. And we were about to win the game. Like we, there was like five or six minutes left, and we were driving. And Fitzgerald Tucson fumbled like inside the red zone, yep. basically for the Broncos. They go down and score, and it's game over. I, that that game broke me, dude. I I never saw the um, the Neil O'Donnell Super Bowl. Sorry, uh, Voldemort. Yeah, um, I was born that year, it. though. That's when I was born. See, you don't want to see that one. Hey, how about this though? Cowboys lead the all time series seventeen sixteen. The Steelers lead the home series uh, in Pittsburgh eight to seven. The Cowboys lead theirs in Dallas nine to six. The Steelers lead the playoffs two to one. <laughs> and Mike McCarthy, as a head coach between his two stints in the league over eighteen seasons, is zero and four against Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Well, he beat us in the Super Bowl. Well, Mike McCarthy. Oh, regular season. Sorry, okay. dude. Okay, okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry, like, sorry. I, I remember you, you that me pause. vividly. I'm sorry. These are regular season. These are regular season records here. So gotcha, gotcha, uh, gotcha. other than the playoff two to one with the, you know, O'Donnell bum. Yeah, the Mike Wallace game thing. at home when Ben yeah. hit Mike Wallace with no time left at home for the touch. That was one of the sickest games ever, dude. Yeah. I 09? feel like the tides yeah. are on our side. I think that was 2009. That was like the year right before that Super Bowl. Uh, see, the season was 2010. They played in 2011. That down sounds in right. Yeah. Yeah, like snow and ice in Dallas and all that other crazy stuff. So, but um, yeah, that's a little bit of team history just to give you that. I thought that was kind of interesting. We want to jump right into this too, because this is going to be a big part of what everything else we're talking about. The injury reports for both of these teams are pretty much like, you know, yay long. They go like, <laughs> like that Browns jersey with all the quarterbacks that are on the back of it. Like a CVS receipt. There you go. That's a, that's even better. Like I didn't know the right word I wanted for that. Thank you, my friend. See, I know you had your round. I, I know I had your round for some reason, but I came ready tonight. Yeah. Isaac Sabalo, hopefully back full participation. Uh, Steelers are looking at, let me see all the injury reports. Keanu Benton went back to full practice after being limited. Nick Herbig upgraded for him. Uh, uh, did not participate the limited cam Hayward got a day of rest. Alex Highsmith, I believe is already ruled out for this game. Groin injury. He's still going to be taking some time another week or two. Jeremiah moon though, Probably going to get activated off the practice squad coming up here. That's going to be an, a little bit of edge rusher depth. Hopefully some help uh, behind Herbick. Ogan Joby was added with the groin limited uh, this week as well. You've got um, multiple running backs on this report, including kick returner Cordero Patterson, two days DMP. Michael Pruitt still dealing with a knee injury, two days DMP. Their fortunes don't look good pending Friday's practice. Sam Malo back to full practice for both days. I think I just mentioned Jalen Warren with the knee, still a DMP. Russell Wilson starting to participate a little more, and you're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But the Cowboys, man. They're on a mini buy. They played Thursday. They struggled against the Giants the previous Thursday night game. You would think they'd get a little bit more rest, but it looks like they're going to be without both of their major pass rushers into Marcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. 
it, that cannot be understated, especially with the way the Steelers' offensive line is having to deal with their own attrition here. They haven't put the same lineup out in four straight weeks. It's been in flux in-game. The corners for the Cowboys are kind of all over the place, too. You've had Trayvon uh, Diggs uh, show up on the injury report. You've had Jordan Lewis show up on the injury report. Looks like Brandon Cooks is a DMP with his knee. Wide receiver, been he's around out. the league. There's a guy that's ever been steady and consistent as anyone, you know, and he's going to be out, which pretty much leaves them only to, uh, with C.D. Lamb. There's a couple guys that showed up here with rest. There's a couple guys that showed up dehydration limited practice, which is interesting. I don't know if they got a flu bug or something going around. I didn't dig any more uh, deep into it, but Parsons and Lawrence by themselves, that's like taking Watt and Highsmith off the board or Watt and Hayward off the board for the Steelers. That's what's happening with the Cowboys team that's already, you know, defensively, they're struggling. They are uh, 20th against the pass and 27th against the run. They're struggling. They're giving up the 27th most points in the league, 26. I understand some of their matchups, some of the teams that they played to get the two and two. They just got rocked by the Ravens uh, recently. They struggled against the Giants, as I said, but... The New Orleans Saints put 44 on them. Yeah. And um, the Cleveland Browns, who I said still couldn't score 20 in a game yet with the highest paid offense, they got the set, they got to 17, but they gave up 44 and 28 to the Ravens and 15 to the Giants and Daniel Jones. It's, uh, it, I, I like the Steelers' chances, but just I was trying to stick with just the injury report because let's shift over real quick. I know you've got some thoughts here, but let's talk about it. This is the main reason we're talking injury report is this O line. It's a different, it's going to be a different lineup yet again, but at least Mason McCormick, maybe they're going to get him to play on the right side or Spencer Anderson. Let's see who starts here because they made uh, McCormick play and say Amalo's place last week as the starter in place of Anderson. And now you've got say Malo back. So is it going to be McCormick? Is it going to be Anderson? Dak Frazier's still kind of new and raw. Broderick Jones, Dan Moore, all this O line shift at least they don't have Lawrence and Parsons out there that they have to contend with. I think it helps the offensive line. Helps the 100%. Offense. I think it's mm -hmm. perfect timing for the offensive line right now. And I think we have the fortunate blessing of the fact the Cowboys are a good team. They're largely regarded as a playoff team. They're above the line. And regardless of the injuries, it shouldn't be viewed as a lesser opponent or a trap game for the Steelers. Also, we have the added boost of primetime, which most people know Tomlin gets the boys going in primetime. So I think it's all good news for the Steelers. You got their two best pass rushers out, an all pro and a perennial pro bowler in Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence. Them being out is great news for a Steelers offensive line that is young, in flux, and injured. I do think that it'll be McCormick and Sumalo. I think they've made their stance known after last game that McCormick is their ideal primary, immediate backup, maybe eventual starter whereas Anderson is kind of a jack-of-all-trades. He did admirably the first two games, but it should be McCormick and Sumalo at the guard spots. I do worry a little bit just because of how the game went last week that the Steelers, I don't want to say they could be rattled. Maybe it's a good thing they lost because now they'll come more ready to play, but I just worry about the, the um, how, do, how do I put this? I, I worry about the fact that last game went how it went and this game, it could be on their mind in, in a negative way. That that doesn't sound as smart as I wanted it, wanted it to sound, but I think the pressure is going to be on for them to start fast, start aggressively on offense and defense. I don't want them to force anything, but it could be good because the major problem against the Colts was that we started super slow on offense and on defense. I mean, there was no defense on the field against the Colts. So I'm looking forward to this game. I'm always looking forward to the Steelers in primetime. Um... I prefer they play earlier because I'm old now. I'm 30. I'm over the hill. But I, I am aware of the fact that Tomlin gets them ready for primetime. And the Cowboys are a, you know, fortable, fortable opponent in which the Steelers will not look past them. They'll come re ready to play. They're, they're a historic rival. I personally don't really care about them, but I understand why people of different age brackets do. So I think that the game is going to be taken quite seriously. <laughs> Talking about us uh, guys getting on board. You're, you're all happy with how things my have been going. My secret project, I like know. Ty Pennington from Extreme Home Makeover. This is my secret room. 
Justin Fields. Well, you know, I was, you know, I was against even acquiring Justin Fields. Like I was yeah. mentioning, man, it's it's tough uh, to see a guy that's been around in the league as long as he has and thinking he's just going to turn it around. But like, you know, it seems to be the fat these days. You're going to see other maybe retread quarterbacks around the league. Mark my words. It's a copycat league. But Sam Darnold, Malik Willis, like mm-hmm. there's a bunch of guys playing better. Oh, man. Coaching Malik. matters. That, yeah. That's that, that's one of the themes of this season across the NFL. Coaching matters. Sam Darnold, Malik Willis, Justin Fields. These guys who've been given another chance on a team that believes in them and is coaching them properly, they're all playing well. And I, I that's why I'm so proud and so happy. Nothing, nothing really these days I, I makes me happier than hearing somebody that I'm friends with or even enemies with that thought that Justin Fields shouldn't be the starter or even acquired that that is giving him props now or saying he's good or saying he deserves to start. And it's such a great feeling because it just confirms I know ball. Yeah, and you know, I was I was looking for Russell Wilson. I know uh, even with this game coming up, I was thinking, well, if Fields doesn't have a good one, you know, it, Russ may be looming in the wings and waiting. And, you know, I know you've you've compiled some numbers for us on Justin Fields. And we know we've mentioned many times before, you and I, even on these post games or myself and Brian, how many plays have been left on the field? And it's just this good, even with the ones that have been taken away due to maybe penalty or otherwise, and why Fields should be the starter. You know, I'm not adverse to Russell Wilson, but right now I think putting him in there can probably do more harm than good. Just let Fields cook for now and be happy you have uh, that you have a capable backup in in Russell Wilson or in Fields, whichever one ends up being the starter. Yeah, I mean, I, I was ready to to give up. And I never like to give up ever, especially when arguing about football or the Steelers. But after that first half, even the field goal drive made me feel a little bit better. But I was ready to accept defeat and think maybe there is something to this whole Russell Wilson should get back in there. Russell Wilson should get his chance and play. And then Justin Fields did something that we haven't seen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you you texted me and you were like, if this game keeps going how it's going, dude, Russell Wilson's going to get his chance next week. And I said, don't kick me while I'm down, dude. (laughs) <laughs> and and uh, I literally, I, I had no fight in me. I was like, yeah, man, if it keeps going at this pace, I, I understand the people that want to put Russell Wilson in. Um, it pains me to say that, but I, I was ready to give up. And then what does Justin Fields do? He goes out and leads three touchdown drives in a row that we haven't seen anything like that since Big Ben 2021. Hasn't happened in so long. Ran for two, threw, threw one, could have thrown two and ran for one if George Pickens didn't drop the touchdown. And he just, he, in a, in a weird way, in a loss, I feel like he just put the, put the finishing touches in, in the final stamp on why he should be our starting quarterback. He, he's getting it. He's getting better. I'm as close to you can be as done with entertaining the Russell Wilson talk. And I understand the Steelers will do what they want to do at the end of the day. Everybody knows that the Steelers don't always align with the fan base. However, it goes beyond the Steeler fan base. You have every major network, every major podcast, every radio station that isn't Pittsburgh-based. Everybody thinks this is an absolute joke, dude. To even consider going to Russell Wilson right now, it makes no sense. I want to believe that Tomlin and the Steelers are doing it just to stroke Wilson's ego and just to keep the pressure on fields. However, I'll say this. That pressure applying from the Steelers has a double-edged sword. You can make Justin Fields think the job isn't his right now, so he keeps playing under pressure. However, that looming feeling of a player over your shoulder, that could make Fields play too conservative or too aggressive. So this could end up biting them in the ass. I hope it doesn't, but at this point, I don't know how you look at everything Fields has done this year, how he's improved, how he's led us to 3-1, and one, how you hear all the stats I listed off and think that, yeah, they should go to Russell Wilson. It makes no sense to me, man. A guy who's less mobile, a guy who probably is just about equal with him as far as throwing the ball, and they want to entertain this idea of making a switch. The grass isn't always greener. I think that Justin Fields showed enough through these first four games, three and one, even though we lost to the Colts in heartbreaking fashion. He has shown enough to be the starting quarterback going forward, in my opinion. I hate that we lost. That's my that's my game recap. Sucks that we lost, but silver lining, I think Fields did enough in the minds of many to put a stamp on the starting quarterback job. 
Well, I'm glad you think that, you know, you're, you're a proud papa or whatever, proud son of, you know, these old geezers that are getting with the program. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, there aren't, I, I hate saying this this way because I want to say there aren't very many quarterbacks who are just peaking, you know, when they're been in the league three, four, five years, all of a sudden you've got Sam Darnold, you've got Baker Sam Mayfield Darnold. leading, the, leading the league. And, and both of these guys are with the Panthers. It just shows you what kind of dumpster fire they are. The bears got the number one overall pick in Caleb Williams. I don't expect any number one pick or rookie or anybody to just jump right in there right away and succeed in the NFL. I think it takes a year or two, but I do feel maybe they gave up on fields a little too soon. It's usually that year three, year four, but Here's the big one. Uh, aside from turnovers, okay, because last season, 16 touchdowns to nine picks. Um, through a certain point of the season, around this same point, I think Kenny Pickett had six touchdowns to five interceptions if you go through, I think, week four, week five, and uh, maybe 1,100-ish yards or whatever, but very few big plays other than against the Las Vegas Raiders with that big win. But here's where... Here's where you turn around a little bit on Justin Fields. I know you said something about sacks, but over the previous two seasons with the Chicago Bears, 28 games started and played in total. He took 99 sacks on, let's see, I got to do the maths with Joe here, 688 dropbacks. Okay. Yeah, but that's not now. He's not on the Bears anymore. Yeah, yeah, but here's the difference. This is, this is the okay. point in making this. When you average that out, he was getting sacked – um, I want to say, uh, I, his numbers down is what I want to say. He's not getting sacked as frequently. I told improved, you I couldn't yeah. do the math. Yeah, it's improved. He's only taken 10 over like the 109. And of course, like you said, it's not all on him. If you take this in and just average it out, I know it's a quarter of the season. It's 40 sacks. He took 44 and 13 and 55 and 15 games previously with the Bears. It was something like 14% of the time he was getting, 14.3% uh, of the time he was dropping back. He was getting sacked. And now it's around 9.1%. It's under 10%. So it's a, yeah. it's a lot better. You want that number to get down like around 1 in 10 or or uh, what do I want to say? No, it, it needs to be higher, like one in 13, one in 15, something like that in, in order to be kind of average. And you said he was about there. I think you said he was like eighth or ninth and whatever sacks that were taken. Dak Prescott, by the way, uh, he's coming in this game. He's been sacked 10 times already and he's thrown uh, he's on more on more attempts. So he's getting sacked fewer times. We'll see what his offensive line is like, but I'm with you with ju the Justin Fields stuff. If he continues to improve or he doesn't even have to improve throwing for over 300 yards and leading three touchdown drives of which he was responsible for all three, two with his yep. feet, one with his yep. arm should have had the other one. The Steelers should be putting up more points. That's why it's hard to not look at this um, upcoming Cowboys game and think that fields could have uh, the, the same or, Better success against this Cowboys team that's missing some of its better players. And I, I think if you look at the injury report, the, the one thing I'm mainly concerned about, the offensive line has already had to deal with the injuries as to come through the season so far. It's the running back room that I'm a little concerned about because I feel like now we don't have Cordero Patterson. Now we don't have Jalen Warren. It's Najee Harris and Aaron Shump, Shump Glenn. I can't even say his name. Shump, Shumpklin and Aaron Shumpklin was working as a substitute teacher last year. <laughs> and I mean, he's averaging five yards a carry because he had one carry for five yards against the Colts. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he does as a backup, but Najee is going to be a key player in this game. And I think he's got a real chance here to kind of silence the haters and, and play well because, um, this season so far hasn't been that great for him. He, he's had a couple of highlight plays, a couple angry runs. The screen against the Colts was the longest screen I've seen the Steelers complete in like 10 years. So he, he's got the talent. It's just with a young offensive line in flux and injury ridden, a player like Najee, a running back like Najee, it's tough to get him going because he's so he's such a bruiser and he's so big. You got to give him a hole. And, and we're not giving him very good holes right now. So this is a game for him to try and show people that he's still a good player and worthy of that first-round selection. And Aaron Shamplin is going to get a chance to, to, to make a name for himself.
Uh, I'm not very confident about him. In fact, I like the kid from, uh, what was it, Dijon Edwards from Georgia, and I like the other oh, Jonathan, Dijon, yeah. Dijon and um, Jonathan Ward. I, I'm I, surprised they cut Edwards, honestly. Yeah, I know. I, Champlin, I'm not. Patterson also kind of hurts, too, because just having him on the field affects special teams. And he I'm, was playing good against the Colts, too. He was I ripping know. off, like, it felt like 10 yards of carry. I know that isn't accurate, but it felt like 10 yards of carry. Um, it felt that way because it was rather close. He was at seven yeah. point. I mean, I guess three yards. It's a whole other three yards. But 7.2 isn't your normal average in the NFL. No. And, uh, you know, Najee was 13 for 19 for one and a half. And yeah. now it's time to – it's kind of a put up or shut up. And I'm glad you brought up because – the star power in this game, we talked about this offline just a little bit. Najee Harris has not scored a touchdown yet this season, nor has George Pickens. George Pickens, I think they're both in line for TDs in this game. I think that the Cowboys defense, particularly without their pass rushers, if this gets into a shootout, we know that Justin Fields can do it now. And we're not sure yeah. that, the, that the Cowboys can shut down these Steelers, uh, shut down anybody's offense. I t totally believe this that the Steelers' defense will be able to put the clamps down. They'll be able to adjust. And I do think that the, that the Colts have, like, in addition to just Jonathan Taylor, they have, like, four dudes at wide receiver that are all bringing different skills. Josh Downs just came back. Uh, Donnie Mitchell, uh, the rookie, he uh, dropped the pass or whatever. But then you had Alec Pierce was making big plays. Michael Pittman. Those guys are all pretty solid. I mean, it's CeeDee yep. Lamb. It's CeeDee Lamb and... Uh, who else that's out here? Like the, just Ferguson, really the tight end. That's yeah, it. Yeah, they, they just don't have the same. Even at running back, where they're last in the league with their rushing offense. I know some of that is because Prescott's been passing, passing, passing. They get behind in some games, and the game script works against them. But it's Ezekiel Elliott and Rico Dowdle. And we've I, been good versus the run this year so yeah. far. So if we're facing a lesser opponent, that's good for us. And I think. I think that the Steelers defense, it's not like them personality wise, and it's not like Tomlin personality wise to come out two weeks in a row super flat. That might be the fan in me, like controlling my mind, but I really would be shocked if we came out on Sunday night football and let the Cowboys just go down for two consecutive touchdown drives like they did versus the Colts. Um, I don't think that'll happen. I think Tomlin's going to have the boys ready. I think the defense is going to be pissed off, they're going to be inspired. Talk about their their poor rushing offense. Cam Hayward is one of the highest ranked defenders this year in pro football focus in the NFL because of his run defense largely. He's only had like a couple of pressures and almost a sack versus the Colts, but he it's primarily his rush defense that has been so impressive. Keanu Benton's been great. I um I I like our inside linebackers. Patrick Queen hasn't been as great as we had hoped with that contract, but I feel like he's like that close, you know to making a bunch of impact plays. He's dropped two interceptions. The one was a fourth down, so I don't really hold that against him. But mm -hmm. I think Queen is close to figuring it out and being that type of player they expected. He's been average so far, better than what we've had since Shazier got hurt. But he he's right there so close to being the player they want him to be. Peyton Wilson, same deal. He's developing, getting better. Roberts is great for what for what he makes here and what, what we expect him to be. I, I and Minka is so passionate. I, I can't see the Steelers defense coming out and laying another egg like they did versus the Colts because it, it it was it was hard to watch versus the Colts, dude. Like it was like they weren't even there for the first half, especially. And with the lack of receiving options for Dak, the lack of talented running backs, I I just I, I can I can totally see the Steelers defense recapturing their early season magic. Versus the Cowboys, you know, they they let up less than 30 points in weeks one through three. That's less than 10 a game. And then the Colts, we went to Colts town and they blew the dam open um, in large part, I think, because we just came out underprepared. I don't think Tomlin in the defense will make that same mistake versus the Cowboys. I think you're right. I think there's one other thing. Warren Sharp at Sharp football. This is something we hadn't really considered. Uh, the offensive line woes be damned. He's got a rush efficiency differential here. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, the run defenses they face to date, it's the number one toughest schedule of run defenses by any team this year. Number four with the Broncos, number six with the Colts, seven with the Chargers, 16th with the Falcons. Uh, the Cowboys are not that team. Um, they're number 27 in run defense. 
I think that's going to spell some trouble. Maybe we finally get off of Najee's back a little bit, maybe see him have a big game. So I said the star power. Justin Fields puts up 250 to 300 again without any turnovers. It's I think it's game over. I think it'd be I I I could see Dak Prescott turning the ball over here. Last week I was a lot more confident in just how bad the Colts were. When we originally looked at some of the predictions on this schedule, it was like, well, the Steelers could be 4-0, and and this could be the first game that's trouble. It's Sunday night, it's prime time, it's Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys have struggled mightily against the AFC North so far in both Cleveland and Baltimore. They're not built to play the AFC North. They're going to probably, they might be built to play the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know what that defense is doing so far this year. It's not doing Burrow any favors. But They're not football tough. They're not football tough, Joe. They got to let their nuts hang. They can't stand... <laughs> They can't hang in the AFC North. This is football heaven, the AFC North. We are the best division in football, regardless of how this year is going. This is where real football is played, baby. The AFC North, the Cowboys are all lights and sparklers and, oh, let's celebrate, you know, the 90s Super Bowls. Not here, pal. We celebrate the 2000 Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what it, man, you talk about some fan bases that have struggled. What have, what have they done? You talk about Tomlin or playoff games or whatever. Just look at the Cowboys, like even yeah. getting in the playoffs. And you think about like Tony Romo and Dak Prescott and like they've had. They're like, they're like, a, they're like a Walmart bin, uh, modern day Steelers, because they're competitive usually and they do decent usually. But at least we have two Super Bowls and three appearances during the 2000s. They haven't even been close since the 90s. They're always competitive, but yeah, they're in in an ironic way. They're a lot like us, but just not as good. Yeah, I think crowd noise could be a factor here in this game. I think there'll be a lot of Cowboys fans. There's a lot of Steelers fans that probably sold tickets for this game and paid for Christmas presents already. So I I heard one of my coworkers tried to get tickets, and uh, the only options were like, Either they were like really, 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 really high nosebleeds you didn't want, or they were kind of close and they were like thousands of dollars. Oh, absolutely. Like, I don't know how accurate that is, but like she said they were thousands of dollars to get to the game if you wanted to sit relatively close. Always, because the two fan bases, I, it's the same struggle trying to travel with the Steelers and getting something on the secondary market. That ticket is going to usually be of more value. It's going to sell higher than a face value. So just kind of keep that in mind. I didn't mention there are still a couple guys on this Cowboys defense just to quickly gloss over Mozzie Smith in his second year. He hasn't quite been the, the player that we thought he might be coming out of Michigan. Uh, Osa Odigizawa. Odigizawa. I cannot, yeah, I can never say this dude's name. Uh, they're still, you know, those are still formidable guys. Linval Joseph. Is Deron Bland is healthy? Uh, I do not believe so. I'm not seeing. Um, okay, that's good. Yeah, I, I got to look at the full roster here. He's the one so, who he's the one who like broke the pick six record last year or two years ago. Um, we've got uh, and, and I mean Diggs. I, Diggs is a guy that I think they could pick on. Diggs, um, Diggs is boomer boss. D- Diggs yeah. is a guy who he's made his money. And he's accepted the way he plays. He goes for the ball every time. Like you can get him to bite, but he'll bite on everything because he's jumping every curl, every hitch. And he's shown, I mean, he's made his money. He's made Pro Bowls, all pros. It's worked for him to an extent. And I I doubt that he has any regrets. But uh, a player like that who plays full gas, no breaks, 100% aggressive as a defensive back, they can be picked on very easily. So that's up to the Steelers and Arthur Smith to scheme that up. Get get George Pickens or Calvin Austin uh, on a double move. That That could be a big play for the Steelers because Trayvon Diggs will bite. He's always thinking about interceptions. Yeah, and uh, just looking here with Kalen Carson, who's a rookie, he's been playing for in place of Bland, and um, he has not been. He's still on IR, designated to return. I had to look again uh, because we didn't see him on the injury report list, which means it, he hasn't been practicing, so he's not nearing that window. Like Jeremiah Moon is still in that window. It just got activated out, obviously, this week because we're behind week four. So still no status update there. So that I mean that's that's a player they've been without. Uh, so far this season, but he's not going to return to help bring any reinforcements for the Cowboys here. So, uh, Zach, Hey man, it's always good. Uh, I mean, I always like to be confident going into these games. It's the ones that scare me the most, just like the Colts one was just like, man, can I find any faults with them or whatever? I just think this is going to be a good football. Yeah. I think it's going to be an entertaining football game. It's going to be prime time. The lights are on. It's two historic franchises. Everybody's eyeballs are going to be on this. So, and I, I think Justin Fields has played well enough. I, I, I don't think the over under for this game is 43 and a half. 
So it's an uptick now from where the Steelers usually have been in the 35 land in the first few games. So it's, uh, there are two points. I think the Steelers are minus two is the line. The Cowboys are one and three against the spread this year. So, but two and oh on the road and oh and two at home. Go figure. I, I feel good. I, I feel way better than the Colts game. The Colts game, I had a false sense of confidence that things would be different now under Tomlin with the trap game bullshit, but apparently it's not. This game I feel good about because the Cowboys are a good opponent. They're viewed as a playoff team. They have a good quarterback, a certified top paid good quarterback, good offense, good defense. They have injuries, but they're not a bad team. So they shouldn't qualify for a trap game type of scenario. Tomlin gets the boys ready for prime time. Our offense has gotten better and better and better and better. I, I feel good about this game from a competitive standpoint, not because, oh, they suck, dude. We're going to blow these motherfuckers. We're going to, sorry, we're going to blow these guys out of the water <laughs> because they suck. I don't feel that way about this game. I feel no, good no, because no. They're, I, in, they're in our tier. You know, this is the perfect opponent for us, and we're in prime time. It, it's almost like a divisional game where, like, you're, you worry about the Ravens and the Bengals because they're good teams, but you know the Steelers are going to come ready to play those good teams. Notice how I didn't mention the Browns. They suck. But I, I feel good about this game. I'm very excited. And, um, yeah, if we win this game and Justin Fields plays good, knock it off with the charade, Tomlin. Just just name Fields the starter. Because I can make the argument that this whole, like, song and dance is doing more bad than good for Justin Fields' confidence. Because in making Justin Fields look over his shoulder at Russell Wilson all this time, he could be forced to play more aggressive as well as more conservative. He's played good enough to deserve the starting nod. That This... This game has to end. So if he wins Sunday night and he plays good, name him the starter. Save us all this grief. Russell Wilson will live with his $40 million he's making this year and, and move on. I couldn't agree with you more, folks. I hope you agree, too. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Zach, once again, uh, thanks for – and we'll be back We'll be back next week. We got to do some post game. We're flipping some spots here, shuffling the deck a little bit. But glad to have you back on. Worked out some of the kinks in the schedule and the te uh, technological stuff. So yes, sir. eight eight twenty Sunday, Hackershire Stadium, Dallas Cowboys visiting the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here we go. Until next time, folks, as we always do to close out the show, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.